நம்முடைய தமிழ் மொழி உலகிலேயே மிகவும் தொன்மையான மொழி எந்த தேசத்திடம் இருக்கின்றதோ அந்த தேசத்திடம் பெருமிதம் பொங்க வேண்டுமா கூடாதா சொல்லு செம்மொழி வலையொலி யூடியூப் சேனல் இந்த சேனலின் மூலமாக அந்த வலையொலியின் மூலமாக பல்வேறு தகவல்களை தினந்தோறும் நாங்கள் வழங்கி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த நிலையில் சிலப்பதிகாரம் என்ற தலைப்பில் ஒவ்வொரு பகுதியாக வழங்கக்கூடிய அந்த தொகுப்பை முழுமையாக கண்டு பார்க்கலாம் This paper is about பத்து பாட்டு an anthology of 10 poems which may be used as a cultural document as a very reliable cultural document pinpointing the value of the study of genuine classics William Hazlitt observes the study of the classics is less to be regarded as an exercise of the intellect than as a discipline of humanity the peculiar advantage of this mode of education consists not so much in strengthening the understanding as in softening and refining the taste it gives men liberal views it accustoms the mind to take an interest in things foreign to itself to love virtue for its own sake to prefer fame to life and glory to riches and to fix our thoughts on the remote and permanent instead of narrow and fleeting objects it teaches us to believe that there is something really great and excellent in the world surviving all the shocks of accident and the fluctuations of opinion and raises us above that low and servile fear which bows only to present to power and abstract authority <coughs> this is what haslitt says about great classics one who is familiar with the sangam classics will realize that these benefits are derived from <coughs> a study of them much more than from a study of ancient greek and roman classics whose value is overestimated by william haslitt when he observes rome and athens filled a place in the history of mankind which can never be occupied again they were two cities he continues <coughs> set on a hill which could not be hid all eyes have seen them and their light shines like a mighty sea mark into the abyss of time <coughs> when haslitt says that the study of classics accustoms the mind to love virtue for its own sake to prefer fame to life and glory to riches and teaches us to believe that there is something really great and excellent in the world one feels that if only haslitt had heard about yattu thohai and patthu paattu the two great anthologies he could have understood that these are the very values those Tamil classics stress much better than Homer, Plato, Virgil, and the Seneca <coughs> have done in their epics, tragedies, and the philosophical writings. The Sangam anthology, called Patthu Paattu, consists of five Atrupadai poems: Purnar Atrupadai, Perumban Atrupadai. சிறுபானாற்றுப்படை மலைபடுகடாம் and திருமுருகாற்றுப்படை and the five poems 
கால்டு குறிஞ்சி பாட்டு முல்லைப்பாட்டு நெடுநல் வாடை மதுரை காஞ்சி அண்டு பட்டினா பாலை அந்த ஆற்றுப்படை இஸ் அ கைட் போயம் இன் விச் அன் ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஹேவிங் ரிசீவ்ட் ஹேண்ட்ஸம் கிஃப்ட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் எ ரிச் பேட்ரன் ஆஃப் ஆர்ட்ஸ் மீட்ஸ் எ ஃபெலோ ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஆன் இஸ் வே பேக் அண்ட் டிரெக்ட் சிம் டு த சேம் பேட்ரன் டிஸ்கிரைபிங் த வே டு த சீஃப்டன்ஸ் கேபிட்டல் த சிட்டி த லவ் அண்ட் அஃபெக்ஷன் ஆஃப் த பேட்ரன் த ராயல் ஃபீஸ்ட் கிவன் பை ஹிம் த ஹாஸ்பிட்டாலிட்டி எக்ஸ்டெண்டட் த ப்ரைஸ்லெஸ் ப்ரெசன்ஸ் அண்ட் த லீவ் டேக்கிங் தி பேர்டன் ஆஃப் மாங்குடி மருதனாஸ் மதுரை காஞ்சி இஸ் அ போயஸ் அட்வைஸ் டு த பாண்டியா கிங் நெடுஞ்செழியன் drawing his attention to the ephemeral nature of fame and victory pleasure and greatness <coughs> the other four pertain to the four major genres kurinji poetry of premarital love mullai poetry of idyllic love palai song of separation in love and naidal song of despair in love <coughs> the famous anthology that is patu patu does not contain any long poem that belongs to the genre marudam song of the sulky mood but this broad classification may be found to belie the real nature of each of these five works as their contents include much more than the subject matter allotted to the particular form do kanji is expected to focus on the transitoriness of the life on earth madurai kanji in its second part glorifies nedinjalian's achievements victories pleasures and luxuries and ends with a prayer <coughs> that they may last long there is a fusion of aham and puram elements in the other four long poems nedunal vaadai a poem of neidal pictures not only the queen in despair but also the king who on the battlefield is ministering to the needs of his soldiers and animals patinapalai considered a poem of separation describes the pomp and wealth of a chola king only to conclude with the poet's final decision that even if he gets this city he will not part from his wife kurinji part reported to have been written by kabilar in order to explain to an aryan king called yal pramathan the intricacies of the tamil agam tradition of premarital love mentions the ideal of self sacrifice and service to humanity and as a long passage on the beauty of nature in the form of a catalog of a hundred flowers mullai part said to be a poem on the mullai theme of iruttal a scene depicting the heroine patiently waiting for the return of the hero is followed by an equally impressive scene in which the chieftain's camp is portrayed in all these predominantly aham poems puram motifs are brought in unobtrusively and as tpm states this is a fine representation of the harmonious blending of aham and puram that is numanan and phenomenon in any family life <coughs> scholars have indicated some family likenesses among these 10 poems purunaratrupadai perumbanaatrupadai sirvanaatrupadai and malaipadugadam are poems in which 
birds are directed to patrons of literature and art tirumurugattu padai an art padai with a difference does not refer to any patron but is intended to direct people to a god mullai paattu and madurai kaanji are poems celebrating the glories of chola and pandya kingdoms and their capitals mullai paattu and nedunalwadai have the same content the separation of a wife from her husband kurinji paattu has much in common with these perumbana atrupadai sirubana atrupadai and madurai kaanji contain rare and reliable material for history madurai kaanji malaipadugadam and tirumurugattupadai present fine descriptions of mountain scenes a number of these idols attract our attention by picturesque descriptions of female beauty the best tribute to this time honored anthology is paid by manonmaniam sundaranar in verse as well as in prose in his epical drama manonmaniam yas valluvar sai tirukkuralai maruvara nangu unarndorgal ulluvaro manuvadi oru kulathuk oru neethi pattu paat aadi manam pattinar patruvaro yetunaiyum porutkisaiyum ilakkanamil karpaneye repeating the praise of pattu paat in prose elsewhere sundaranar observes they are charming portraits of nature in some of her pleasant and striking moods and for soberness of thought and accuracy of representation they will bear comparison with anything in the whole realm of literature in them critics will seek in vain for the ideal accumulation of hyperbolical conceits which characterizes the tamil poems of more modern times it is to be hoped that as these immortal works of antiquity become better known and appreciated that the childish delight in riotous imagination which now passes for poetic taste will give way to a more sober minded and judicious estimate of the true functions of poetry this is what he says about patthu part in prose we come across an admirable use of two kinds of meter in these long poems the predominant one is asiriyappa peculiar to the ahaval verse in which each line consists of four feet each foot containing two syllables these lines have a flowing and rapid swing the other meter is called vanjipa in which each line consists of two feet each foot containing three syllables these are found to have a slow halting swing musical effect of a splendid nature is produced by rhymes in separate lines internal rhymes and alliterations of different types <coughs> the sangam poets seem to be fully aware of the dictum that poetry without music is not poetry the flowing rhythm the tamil poets can manage aiming at what milton calls the link to sweetness long drawn out as on the admiration of george hart and the hefers the translators of purananur they say about tamil verse the thought runs from line to line so to speak breathlessly till the end ideas are connected by participles and adjectives indefinitely and the finite verb is seldom seen this is done with a vengeance 
by the author of mullai paattu which consists of a single main class and two subordinate classes running to more than a hundred lines the poet's concern for economy of diction in each of these 10 poems well in the each of these 10 well wrought urns is astounding western admirers of greek and latin classics used to contend that those works train the reader to give terse and concise expression to his thoughts but as a tamil savant says <coughs> A student of these ancient Tamil poems will realize that they are not at all inferior to the cl- European classics in p- packing thoughts in terse, pregnant words and phrases. He will find that words are so dovetailed as to give him the impression of an inlaid mosaic. These ancient Tamil poets. knew that there is no use of poems that are composed of several meaningless words pala sollal paranda paaval en payan reverend you pope marvels at the provisions made by the tamil grammarians and the experts in prosody enabling the tamil poets to easily achieve terseness of expression being aware of the value of the device called ellipsis the tamil poets make profuse use of the five tohais and what are called hms by which they can omit syllables words phrases and even sentences without sacrificing the sense imagery is one of the strongest points with these poets the abundance of striking images of several types would bewilder any reader's imagination impressed with the apt images drawn from various walks of life ek ramanujan says i translate these poems more out of envy than of love defining the image as that which presents an intellectual and emotional complex in an instant of time is rapport states that it is better to present one image in a lifetime than to produce voluminous works the american poet would have been more than delighted if only he had stumbled upon a few sangam poems unfortunately this did not happen during his lifetime in patu part as in etu tohai a plethora of similes which appeal to one or more of the five senses long drawn out similes similes within similes and the clusters of similes dazzle the reader in numerous contexts the description of the musical instrument called the yaal in purunarathupadai is a case in point this is how this instrument is described its head is like deer's smooth face leather, the leather cover is as red as a lamp's bright flame its surface is like the fair stomach of a fair pregnant dame the eyelets fastening the leather cover are bound with pins resembling the eyes of crabs that live in holes an opening on the drum is like the crescent moon on its eighth day its handle looks like the cobra's hood outspread the bands around the handle resemble bangles worn by dark women <coughs> the strings resemble grains of millet husked the lute looks like a bedecked bride karihalan's escape from prison is compared to the escape of 
a trapped elephant. As in in Patina Pali, it is said, as a long trunked elephant falls when trapped within a pit, breaks the sides, steps on the piled up earth, and joins its mate. Unlike Milton, who saw nature through the spectacles of books, the Sangam poets exhibit a close knowledge of the flora and fauna of the entire Tamil land. The graphic language they use indicates their first hand acquaintance with nature. There are countless realistic descriptions of mountains, clouds, seas, rivers, ponds, lakes, streams, fields, woods, animals, birds, trees, plants, creepers and flowers. They seem to be, these poets seem to be especially fond of flowers. As Taninaihadil famously observes, they said it all with the flowers. He says, the striped and shapely blooms of Kurkati vines, long and green. This is a description in Perumbanatru Padai. The striped and shapely blooms of Kurkati vines, long and green, twine round the short stemmed trunks of Kanji trees. Those flowers fall in pools formed in the water swept and shining sands and look like rice cakes placed in milk, prepared in pans with thread-like paste mixed with jelly by those who trade in cakes. Malaybadukadam is full of gorgeous descriptions of nature, presenting a few arresting pictures. There is this description in Malaybadukadam. The Musundai creepers blossoms resemble Pleiades, the group of stars, in the broad black sky. Peacocks stand tired after dancing with their tails down. The monkeys leap on the forks of tall bamboos. Jungle men stand on high platforms, driving away beasts and birds by clapping their hands. The lonely stag stands in the forest crying loudly. Crabs crawl about in the rice fields, bellowing bulls charge at people. The red-eyed deer runs swiftly out of fear. The sugarcane stalks tossed about by strong winds appear like the spears of an army. The author of Kurinji Patu, describing the sunset, draws our attention to the following happenings which constitute a scene of extraordinary appeal fit for a large painting by a master craftsman. This is the description. The sun sinking behind the hills, the deer taking refuge under trees, the cows calling their calves, the bent billed nightingale calling out its mate, the cobra disgorging its gem, herdsmen playing their rural tunes, priests performing their evening devotions, bright bangled ladies engaged in their evening tasks, jungle men living on lofts lighting their fires, forest beasts calling to their mates and birds caroling. <laughs> 